with the war of the Spanish succession entering its eighth year. Early in 1709, the French king, Louis XIV, following the defeats at the hands of the Allies at the battles of Blenheim, Ramillies and Oudenard, combined with the failure of the harvest and the prospect of an Allied invasion, contacted the Duke of Marlborough in an attempt to start negotiations for peace. However, the terms that Marlborough was instructed to offer Louis were unacceptable to the French. As a result, by the summer of 1709, the French commander-in-chief in Flanders, Duke Villiers, had reinforced his army with troops from other theatres and formed strong defensive lines in France and was ordered not to engage in battle. Due to the harsh winter, the Allied campaign of 1709 did not begin until mid-June. Unable to bring the French to battle, Marlborough advanced to capture the fortified city of Tournai, which fell after a long siege of almost 70 days. The Allies then moved to seize Mons, where the Allies hoped to outflank the French defensive lines. Villars then moved to the defence of Mons, who was under revised orders to prevent the fall of Mons at all costs. He deployed his troops in a gap in the forests between the villages of La Folle and Malplaquet. By the 29th of August, the Allied army was in position to launch an attack. However, Marlborough was persuaded by senior Allied generals not to attack immediately, but wait for the further reinforcements rushing to join them. Villars used this delay effectively by further fortifying his positions. Also during this delay, Marshal Boufflers arrived to reinforce Villars. The French army of approximately 75,000 men deployed in a strong defensive position. With a three mile long line covered with entrenchments and fortifications, with their right wing protected by the forest of Lanier and their left wing protected by the forest of Sars. With a fortification forward from the main line on a hill in the forest. However, as strong as the French position appeared, it did have some drawbacks and weaknesses. Namely, their ability to manoeuvre and transfer forces along their lines was severely restricted. Also, their cavalry could take no part in the battle until their defensive line was breached by the Allies. The woods in the centre and on their left flank gave the Allies the opportunity to approach the French lines undetected. The Allied army of approximately 86,000 men, consisting mainly of Dutch and Austrian troops, with large contingents of British and Prussian troops, planned to make use of the French army's inability to manoeuvre by feigning attacks on the French right and centre while delivering their main attack on the French left. While Allied reinforcements en route was ordered to advance around the French left flank and seize the village of La Folle. Once the French left wing had been pierced, the Allied cavalry would then be ordered to attack and break the enemy position. The Allies had deployed batteries of heavy artillery to bombard the French flanks, while the remainder of their artillery was positioned along their line. The battle began at around 7.30 with an Allied artillery bombardment from both flanks, followed by an advance of the Allied infantry from their left wing, followed half an hour later by an advance of the Allied infantry from their right wing. During the Allied attack on the French left flank, Villars requested reinforcements from his right flank 
under the command of Boofler's. However, Boofler's was unable to assist him as he was also under heavy Allied attack. After fierce fighting, Allied infantry began to push the French out of their advanced fortifications in the forest of Sars. Meanwhile, Allied reinforcements had advanced around the French left flank, attacking towards the village of La Folle, forcing Villars to divert forces from his centre to reinforce his left flank. Meanwhile, on the Allied left flank, instead of just threatening the French right flank, the Prince of Orange launched a major attack which was met by sustained artillery fire and a staunch defence, which repelled the Allied attack, inflicting some 6,000 casualties. As heavy fighting continued, Prince Eugene was wounded in the head, but stayed on the battlefield, while Villars received a severe leg wound, requiring him to leave the field of battle. As the French continued to put up a determined resistance, the command of the French army transferred to Boufflers. Meanwhile, the Prince of Orange renewed his attack and successfully seized the entrenchments on the Allied left. The Allies then advanced against the now weakened French centre. With heavy artillery support, they managed to successfully seize the line of French entrenchments. This enabled the Allied cavalry to advance through the line to attack the French cavalry. A fierce cavalry battle ensued, with the French cavalry repeatedly driving the Allied cavalry back towards the entrenchments, only for them to be repeatedly driven back in turn by musket fire from the Allied infantry occupying the entrenchments. By around 3 p.m., with the Allies breaking through on both flanks and their cavalry failing to drive the Allied cavalry off the battlefield, Boufflers ordered the withdrawal of the French army and were able to leave the battlefield in good order. The Allied army had won the battle, but at a terrible cost. So great were their casualties that they could not effectively pursue the French. Malplaquet was one of the bloodiest battles of the 18th century, with French casualties being around 15,000, while the Allied casualties were estimated to be between 17 and 24,000. Although the fortress of Mons surrendered to the Allied army the following month, Marlborough was heavily criticised for the heavy Allied casualties at Malplaquet. His political enemies in England accused him of being more concerned with his own advancement than the welfare of his troops. He was recalled to England and forced from office by continuing political plotting from his enemies and the breakdown of the relationship between his wife Sarah and Queen Anne. Malplaquet was the Duke of Marlborough's last battle. He went into self-imposed exile and only returned to royal favour with the succession of George I in 1714. Marlborough by that time was a sick man and lived in retirement until his death. Although the French army was forced to leave the battlefield at Malplaquet, they had lost fewer men than the Allies and had prevented an Allied invasion of France. The high casualties had shocked the Allies, who began to seek a way to end the conflict. And although the war dragged on until 1714, as a result of Malplaquet, the French achieved far more favourable peace terms.